So my name is Jenny Schramm. My title would be graduate student at the University of Maine in the School of Biology and Ecology in Sustainability Solutions Initiative. On a real basic level, I'm just trying to find what it is in Maine, the weather factors in Maine that drive sap flow. So there's been studies in other places um, in the Northeast and they, they've come up with equations for um, sort of weather factors that they think are important for driving sap flow. Um, but that hasn't been done here in Maine. Typically you want a season where you have a lot of freezing events and a lot, a lot of thawing events. In the springtime, when the tree tissue thaws, it causes a positive pressure to develop in the tree. And it's sort of a complicated, it's, it's a biophysical process, but then there's also these um, barriers basically between the different tissue types in the tree. So it causes this positive pressure to develop. And that's basically, so when you injure the tree or when you put in these taps, um, that's what allows the sap to flow out. And eventually the tree will just equilibrate. Um, you know, once enough sap flows out, unless you have another freeze event. So a freeze event causes it to draw up a bunch of water again. And then during the thaw, that positive pressure will develop again. And then those, those same taps will start to flow. And so you really need, you need both the freeze and the thaw events. If you just have a one-time thaw, which happens in a lot of the Southern states that have maple trees, they're not able to harvest because they really only have that one weekend or maybe those, you know, those few days where they have the right temperatures um, but then the season stops. Um, in Maine, we're lucky in that we have um, enough freezing and thawing going on and, and repeat events that you have what's called a recharge um, and then the process starts over. You know, one side of my project is sort of this um, biological process. So how are trees responding to weather? The other side of that is um, trying to better understand the maple syrup producing community. I'm hoping to kind of get at where are people getting their information um, based on how long they've been in a particular place. Does that sort of affect how they perceive climate change? Um, does that affect how they make decisions? And so trying to kind of understand how ultimately, you know, climate change regardless of the biological processes, how is that going to affect the people? How readily are people going to adapt um, based on, you know, their motivations and then how readily can they adapt based on where they're getting their, their information from? A lot of people have been reaching out and, and wanting to do kind of collaborative efforts and I think part of that is the state really recognizing that it, it wants to maintain um, you know, the maple syrup industry and, and, and feeling like that's an important legacy and an important um, icon, you know, in Maine. My hope is that, you know, just strictly from my own research is I would really like to come up with a meaningful model for uh, sap flow in Maine. And if I could succeed at doing that, that would be awesome. And then on top of that, if we, if, you know, through this, this project, I was somehow better able to figure out how to help main producers uh, adapt to climate change in the future. I mean, that would be super deluxe um, to somehow think that some kid 100 years from now is eating, you know, a plate full of flapjacks with maple syrup that, that his family collected from their backyard, um, you know, somehow the result of something I did, that would be awesome. <laughs>